Hi everyone. Today's topic is hypoxia and oxygen therapy. Synopsis, introduction, types of hypoxia, signs and symptoms of hypoxia, physiological basis of oxygen therapy, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and oxygen toxicity. So before getting into the proper topic, let us know certain definitions for the terms that we often use. Hypoxia. What is hypoxia? So hypoxia is the lack of oxygen supply at the tissue level. So in the tissue, any cell organism, when it suffers from the lack of oxygen it is called as hypoxia so what is anoxia anoxia is the complete absence of oxygen in the tissues so that is the difference between the hypoxia and anoxia so decreased oxygen supply at tissue level is hypoxia when there is complete absence then that is anoxia then what is hypoxemia hypoxemia is when there is decreased oxygen content in the arterial blood it is not about the supply it is about the decreased oxygen content in the arterial blood let us discuss the various types of hypoxia and the causes of it to start with hypoxic hypoxia which is when the decreased oxygen tension of the arterial blood occurs so for example in the inspired air or any hypoventilation can cause it and then anemic hypoxia is when the decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood so that is the transport so anemic hypoxia and then stagnant hypoxia so this is when decreased rate of blood flow to the tissue so the rate of blood flow decreases so due to various clinical condition and then finally histotoxic hypoxia or poisoning hypoxia so when there is enough oxygen but there is decreased utilization of oxygen by the tissues so this is because of the decreased utilization so this is histotoxic hypoxia let us discuss the causes of hypoxic hypoxia so it is when there is a decreased availability of oxygen so low partial pressure of oxygen in the inspired air for example in high altitude so where the person is exposed to very low atmospheric oxygen tension so in at the sea level it is different but at uh, high altitude so the partial pressure of oxygen will be low so that can lead on to hypoxic hypoxia second one is the when the person is stuck in a closed space so breathing in a closed space uh, for example in an auditorium with a huge crowd or you sitting in a small room for a longer time so that can lead on to hypoxic hypoxia and then artificial gas breathing so the mixture so the gas mixture with low partial pressure of oxygen can lead on to hypoxic hypoxia and then hypoventilation so any airway obstruction so in the respiratory tract and then decreased lung comprehension in the pneumothorax poliomyelitis can cause uh, 
paralysis of the respiratory muscles so by that way it can cause hypoxic hypoxia and then damage to the respiratory center by drugs or by tumors or even any cerebrovascular accident can uh, damage the respiratory center and then diffusion defects so pulmonary edema so that so in pulmonary edema uh, there will be increased thickness of the respiratory membrane so diffusion will be difficult and then pulmonary fibrosis so pulmonary fibrosis as the lungs will be having non functioning respiratory membrane so most of the so the fibrosis part will not take part in the diffusion and then emphysema so marked reduction in area of the respiratory membrane so these are all the causes of the diffusion defects and then abnormal ventilation perfusion ratio so in case of physiological shunts and in case of any heart diseases and the av shunts now what is respiratory hypoxia we must know what is respiratory hypoxia in spite of hypoxic hypoxia there is a term called respiratory hypoxia so it is nothing when we take off the defect in the inspired air other than that hypoventilation diffusion defect and uh, abnormal ventilation perfusion ratio all these things the together called as respiratory hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia otherwise called as arterial hypoxia so when there is decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the artery here you can see so that will also decrease the partial pressure of oxygen in the venous blood it is not only the artery so initially after the extraction of oxygen in the capillary so in the venous blood so normally uh, where it will be in after hypoxic hypoxia so the extraction of oxygen will be and then after that the partial pressure of the oxygen in the venous blood will fall further hypoxic hypoxia is characterized by low arterial partial pressure of oxygen increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and increase in the hydrogen ions so low arterial oxygen content so low arterial percentage in the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin so very low arterial venous partial pressure of oxygen difference so as there is a uh, very low oxygen pressure in the arteries the in the vein also the partial pressure of oxygen will be low so oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is normal and blood flow to the tissues also is normal and then even delivery is not affected delivery of oxygen to the tissues is not affected moving on to the anemic hypoxia so decreased oxygen carrying capacity of the blood so the causes the anemia when there is bone marrow depression and the protection of the rbc defect and also the other blood cells 
and then hemorrhage the blood loss so that can lead on to uh, the carrying capacity will be affected so altered hemoglobin so the hemoglobin which cannot carry the oxygen properly in case of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and meth hemoglobinemia so these altered hemoglobin can cause anemic hypoxia in anemic hypoxia so there will not be much difference in the arterial oxygen pressure so the oxygen pressure will be normal in it but when there is the de decrease in the hemoglobin concentration the oxygen carrying capacity also falls so here you can see the oxygen carrying capacity falls so the oxygen extraction in the cells so that there will not there will not be much change in it the venous oxygen pressure in organs that also falls just because of the decreased oxygen carrying capacity so oxygen pressure in the artery is unchanged whereas when there is an uh, oxygen carrying capacity is decreased the venous oxygen pressure also decreases anemic hypoxia it is characterized by the normal partial pressure of oxygen in the inspired air so lungs are normal so no diffusion defect so the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries are normal oxygen carrying capacity of blood is reduced as there is lesser hemoglobin to carry it blood oxygen content is reduced hence the oxygen delivery to the tissue is also reduced but the oxygen venous so arterial venous oxygen difference is normal so normal rate of blood flow and the utilization of oxygen is also normal pathophysiology of anemic hypoxia mild to moderate anemia in case of mild to moderate anemia that uh, usually will not produce any hypoxic symptom at rest so this is because uh, it has an compensatory mechanism so in case of mild to moderate anemia the rbc will produce more 2 3 dbg so what this 2 3 dbg does is it combines with the oxyhemoglobin and it liberates more oxygen from the hemoglobin so at rest it will not produce much symptoms but in case of exercise or any heavy work so the oxygen demand will be more as there will be more oxygen consumption so that will bring the symptoms of hypoxia so in case of carbon monoxide poisoning so the anemic hypoxia will be severe and they need emergency treatment so this carbon monoxide poisoning produces severe hypoxia so this is just by preventing the hemoglobin to bind with the oxygen moving on to the stagnant hypoxia this occurs due to the decreased blood flow to the tissues so that in spite of normal partial pressure of oxygen and hemoglobin adequate oxygen is not delivered so the blood flow defect this is due to the blood flow defect so decreased blood flow to the tissues so normal partial pressure of oxygen saturation normal hemoglobin in normal tissues 
so the due to the decreased blood flow the oxygen will not be properly supplied so causes there are generalized causes and then the generalized causes due to the shock that is due to the circulatory failure or due to hemorrhage so in these conditions so when uh, the baroreceptors their reflex causes the vasoconstriction and thus the blood flow to the tissues is decreased so the worst affected organs are uh, kidney and the heart which will which has uh, the very high demand of oxygen and then congestive heart failure so there will be uh, decreased venous return in this so decreased blood flow to the tissue which causes the hypoxia so here uh, liver and the brain are the most affected part just because of the venous congestion so and also there will be pulmonary congestion and uh, that produce uh, defect in the oxygenation so the diffusion will also get affected so the patient will have uh, the hypoxic uh, hypoxia here in addition to the stagnant hypoxia so this is in case of congestive heart failure and then localized issues so it is whether issues in the uh, local vessels so in case of thrombosis so blockage in the blood vessels or any atherosclerosis and also the embolism in stagnant hypoxia so the arterial oxygen pressure is normal but the venous oxygen pressure falls so the supply there is no issue with the supply so but as there is some defect in the blood flow there will be decrease um blood reaches the decreased oxygen reaches the tissues so there will be more oxygen extraction and that causes the venous oxygen oxygen pressure to decrease stagnant hypoxia crog it is characterized by the uh, decreased rate of blood flow normal oxygen tension and oxygen tension uh, oxygen content and the normal arterial oxygen saturation arteriovenous oxygen pressure is higher so oxygen delivery also decreases histotoxic hypoxia so it is inhibition of the cellular respiration so due to the poisoning so utilization issue so the causes are uh, any cyanide or sulfide poisoning so that dam damages the enzyme cytochrome oxidase so diphtheria diphtheria there will be so in case of diphtheria so it inhibits the the microbes inhibit the synthesis of the cytochrome so very very so the important steps in the tissue utilization of oxygen in formation of carbon dioxide is compromised so histotoxic hypoxia so here you can see the oxygen tension in the artery is normal but so as there is no proper conception of oxygen there will be increase of oxygen in the 
venous level oxygen pressure in the veins increases so it is hysteroxic hypoxia is characterized by normal partial pressure of oxygen in the artery so oxygen saturation is normal rate of blood flow is also normal carbon dioxide in oxygen content is also normal delivery of oxygen is also normal so but there will not be any difference in the arterial venous oxygen so it is nil but not able to utilize the oxygen just because of the inhibition of the cellular respiration salient features of hypoxia as mentioned or the all type all the types of hypoxia so in case of hypoxic hypoxia you can see the in the arterial blood oxygen tension is decrease oxygen content is decrease so the difference of oxygen vein oxygen content is also decreased in case of anemic hypoxia the oxygen carrying capacity is decreased and oxygen content of the blood is decreased here there will not be any cyanosis but in case of hypoxic hypoxia there will be cyanosis stagnant hypoxia blood flow is decreased so the oxygen uh, venous difference of oxygen uh, atrio venous difference of oxygen is increased so locally they may have the cyanosis in histostoxic hypoxia so there is tissue issue utilization defect just because of the inhibition of the cellular respiration there will not be any cyanosis and no difference in the oxygen uh, arterial venous uh, oxygen level effects of hypoxia when a patient has hypoxia uh, of any type so what happens is uh, the carotid body the hemoreceptors in the carotid body it senses the change in the oxygen concentration the oxygen tension and it sends the signal to the brain so in response what happens is from the vasa motor center it sends signal to lung and heart so it increases the respiratory rate and also constricts the vessels in the lung and it also increases the heart rate and it dilates the peripheral blood vessels so these are the compensatory mechanism that initially happens when there is an hypoxic situation so all these effects of hypoxia it depends on the rapidity of the onset so how uh, fast it comes or how, how much time it takes it all depends on the rapidity and also the severity how low the oxygen tension level is and also the duration duration of the hypoxia how long it is is it for the shorter time or for the longer duration and we have seen the compensatory mechanisms of the body so later we'll see it elaborately and then the most susceptible organ that is um, for susceptible organ for uh, hypoxia or brain and then heart so mainly it affects the central nervous system so especially the highest center so that's why in the word there is an hypoxic situation the it starts with the confusion and finally it reaches the seizures so hypoxia based on the 
arterial oxygen pressure so fulminant hypoxia it is a severe form of hypoxia which develops very fast so it is when the oxygen arterial oxygen pressure level goes below 20 millimeter of mercury so for example uh, this situation happens only when in an aircraft cabin so when it suddenly exposures to uh, oxygen level where there is uh, no oxygen is available and uh, when somebody comes out of the uh, aircraft cabin so above the feet uh, 30,000 feet attitude so that there may not be any oxygen available so this is the severest form of hypoxia so they may lose their uh, consciousness so within seconds so that is due to the inavailability of oxygen and then uh, if it progresses so brain death can occur within four to five minutes and then uh, the second one is the acute hypoxia so when the uh, arterial oxygen pressure is between 20 to 40 millimeter of mercury this happens when uh, so above the um, sea level that is when the attitude is around 18,000 to 20,000 feet so symptoms they can be similar to the alcoholic intoxication like lack of coordination slurred speech um, slow slowed reflexes and uh, poor confidence slowly uh, they start losing the consciousness so if there is no uh, compensatory mechanisms availed then they can go into coma and then finally death finally the chronic hypoxia when the arterial oxygen pressure is between 60 to so 40 to 60 millimeter of mercury so people living at the altitudes of 10,000 to 18,000 feet for longer period of time so this is the most common type of hypoxia which is clinically seen so the symptoms are uh, severe fatigue dyspnea and then the respiratory arrhythmia like uh, chain strokes breathing so which can be seen during the sleep what happens in the hypoxic condition so in the circulation so the oxygen level will be lower and carbon dioxide level will be more so in the rbc it is converted into more hydrogen ions so this hydrogen ion itself it uh, simulates the respiratory center through the chemoreceptors so that increases the respiratory rate and depth and there will be more uh, oxygen intake and it will wash out more carbon dioxide so in the kidney it will decrease uh, the it will uh, eliminate more hydrogen ions initially but after the compensatory mechanism so after the carbon dioxide being washed out from the uh, through the respiration so it produces alkaline urine so this is due to the alkalosis condition which is uh, from the carbon dioxide washed out by hyperventilation so there will be alkalosis so that finally after the compensatory mechanism there will be alkaline urine so the organs organ survival in hypoxia so brain can survive in hypoxic condition for one minute and the heart for five minutes liver and kidney for 10 minutes so here you can see the effect of 
the hypoxia so how it slowly goes off so you can see how initially the in the first minute the writing was fine slowly it is deteriorating you can see in the second minute third minute and you can see in the sixth fifth minute so it's finally going off slowly so when they are again put back on oxygen so it's coming back better so this is the effect of hypoxia on the central nervous system so how slowly they get deteriorated so without the oxygen so the effect of hypoxia on the central nervous system so it is rapid and severe sudden loss of consciousness and it can lead on to death so slower slower hypoxia so it is similar to alcoholic intoxication so they are apathetic so loss of self control muscle weaknesses and in coordination easy fatigue ability loss of discriminative ability and power of judgment visual and auditory acuity gets diminished so in the cns the most affected part is the higher center that's why there is this power of judgment the thought process it all slowly goes off so the effect of hypoxia on the cells so hypoxia causes the production of transcription factors so that is hypoxia inducible factors so it has uh, two subunits alpha and beta so in hypoxic cell the alpha dimerize with the beta subunit and they produce the angiogenic factors which causes the angiogenesis and also produce the erythropoietin so it stimulates the process production of the erythropoietin and erythropoietin stimulates the erythropoiesis and there will be enormous production of erythrocytes to carry more and more and more oxygen so the effects of hypoxia on the central uh, cardiovascular system so initially there will be increase in the heart rate and the force of contraction which uh, increases the cardiac output and the blood pressure all these things occurs in the initial accommodation period later on so it uh, decreases the force of contraction and the blood pressure but the cardiac acceleration persists this phase is just because uh, it becomes normal so once the oxygen supply to the tissues come back to normal effects of hypoxia on the respiratory system it uh, increases the respiratory rate due to the stimulation of hemoreceptors and large amount of carbon dioxide is washed out leading to the alkalosis respiration becomes shallow and periodic depression of respiratory center of poor supply of oxygen to the respiratory center in the center then the rate and force of breathing decrease so on gastrointestinal tract so there will be loss of appetite nausea vomiting dryness of mouth and it increases the thirst sensation on kidney it increases the secretion of erythropoietin and alkaline urine due to the wash out of carbon dioxide during breathing signs of hypoxia so cyanosis we know that cyanosis is the bluish and discoloration of skin and the mucous membrane so this is caused by the presence of reduced hemoglobin or deoxyhemoglobin 
so the presence of reduced hemoglobin more than 5 grams so this cyanosis may not be present in all forms of hypoxia in case of uh, anemic hypoxia in anemic patient they may never uh, uh, develop cyanosis so this is because there will be uh, not uh, adequate hemoglobin concentration is present so in contrast the patients with uh, polycythemia with more hemoglobin they may be cyanotic uh, as a result of so when there is more uh, hemoglobin they can be cyanotic if they have uh, more reduced hemoglobin so we cannot uh, take this uh, cyanosis as a reliable sign in anemic hypoxia but uh, <clears throat> and also cyanosis will not occur in histotoxic hypoxia either and because the saturation oxygen saturation is of uh, so in the hemoglobin is normal in the histostatic hypoxia and then tachycardia so this occurs so as there is a stimulation of the peripheral hemoreceptors to the low arterial oxygen pressure tachypnea increase in the respiratory rate and also deep breathing hyperapnea so this is also um, stimulated by the chemoreceptors so <clears throat> this tachypnea and tachycardia is present in hypoxic hypoxia where the arterial oxygen pressure is lower but these two are absent in case uh, in anemic hypoxia and also stagnant hypoxia where the arterial oxygen pressure is normal so these signs depends on the types of hypoxia so acute hypoxia it resembles like alcohol alcoholic intoxication just because in case of uh, lower oxygen supply what happens is uh, the brain receives lesser oxygen so the higher center immediately could not work as normal anaerobic uh, glycolysis so energy production moves to aerobic to anaerobic metabolic acidosis with uh, respiratory alkalosis so carbon dioxide washed out so more uh, hydrogen ions formed in the blood so that's lead on to this condition angiogenesis so this we have seen because of the hypoxic inducible factor polycythemia due to the over production of the red blood cell by stimulation of erythropoietin pulmonary hypertension so this occurs uh, secondary to the generalized hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction the increased pulmonary artery pressure causes even more distribution of pulmonary blood flow so which uh, can increase the gas exchange so this elevated pulmonary artery pressure can um induce the core pulmonary you know if the hypoxia is more severe so it can lead on to the pulmonary edema and uh, uh, it will further damage the patient's lung
let us move on to the oxygen so oxygen was discovered in 1773 by carl wilhelm scheele so it is uh, it was john priestley in 1774 was the one who published a paper on oxygen and anthony lavoisier in uh, 1777 coined the term o2 that is oxygen treatment of hypoxia so treatment depends on the underlying cause and the, the type of the hypoxia so there are uh, certain hypoxia which has uh, uh, great value for the oxygen therapy and which has no use of oxygen therapy so it is um, mandated to know before starting the oxygen therapy that which form of hypoxia the patient is facing in general so the simple oxygen therapy is uh, may not be helpful in the treatment of most of the hypoxia so because uh, the diffusion uh, membrane across the uh, so respiratory system so it depends on the partial pressure of the oxygen so so the simple oxygen therapy may not be useful in those conditions and it may they may uh, require either uh, inhalation of 100% pure oxygen at uh, higher atmospheric pressure so this is called as a hyperbaric oxygen therapy so pure oxygen with uh, higher barometric pressure different methods of oxygen therapy so oxygen can be administered by placing a tent so placing the tent on the patient's head that contains air fortified with the oxygen so this is used in the infants newborns and then uh, the second one is using a mask in the patient so allowing the patient to breathe either pure oxygen or higher concentration of oxygen so this is through a mask and then finally administering oxygen through an intranasal tube and finally the mechanical ventilation in which the tube is placed in the trachea directly in the, the tube is either place with a machine which does the function of the lung which uh, gives the oxygen so mechanically so with the help of the machine this is mechanical ventilation oxygen therapy so it is extremely useful in atmospheric hypoxia so that can completely correct the depressed oxygen level in the inspired gases so in hypoventilation hypoxia can move five times as much oxygen into the alveoli with each breath in hypoxia caused by the impaired alveolar diffusion membrane so that can increase the oxygen pressure in the alveoli from the normal value of about 100 mm of uh, mercury to as high as 600 mm of mercury so oxygen therapy is of much lesser value in uh, anemic hypoxia and stagnant hypoxia so where the normal there will be normal uh, alveolar oxygen so extra oxygen which can be given to the oxygen therapy so can be transported in the dissolved state so when the alveolar oxygen is increased to maximum so this is the this may be the difference between the life and death therefore uh, here 
the hyperbarbaric oxygen therapy is much more useful in these conditions. Inhalation of oxygen. So oxygen therapy is of no use in histotoxic hypoxia because the supply is fine here. Only the utilization of oxygen by the um, tissues is impaired. That is because of the uh, damage to the cellular respiration. So we have to be cautious in the oxygen therapy. Patients with severe pulmonary failure with hypercapnia may lead on to death. So the central chemoreceptors are inhibited following excessive overdrive by the oxygen pressure. So respiratory drive is by the peripheral chemoreceptor due to hypoxic stimulation. So, so in certain conditions, the therapy is very, very important. So we have to be very cautious. So without the oxygen therapy, some patient may survive because of the peripheral chemoreceptor stimulation itself. So oxygen ther therapy takes away the hypoxic drive and that can cause the death because of the direct depression of the respiratory center. Hyperbarbaric oxygen therapy. So the advantage is so it increases the dissolved oxygen in plasma. So it is not affected by the hemoglobin concentration. So we all know that uh, oxygen is transported by hemoglobin and also in the dissolved form. Though it is in very less percentage, so they have a very important role. So plasma carries around 0.3 ml of dissolved oxygen per 100 ml. Right. So dissolved oxygen depends on the pressure of oxygen. So 100% oxygen is administered at 3 atmospheric pressure, whereas gas around body is normal air compressed to the same high pressure level. So it is done for 30 days one to two hours per day. So this is how they do that. So they place a patient in a um, compressor. So with the, they increase atmospheric pressure to three and 100% uh, oxygen is administered. This is how the hyperbarbaric oxygen therapy is done. So at one atmospheric pressure, so this is these are all the values. So at one atmospheric pressure, it is 2 ml per 100 ml. At two atmospheric pressure, it is 4 ml per 100 ml. At three atmospheric pressure, it is 6 ml per 100 ml. So this is how they administer the oxygen. So they increase the atmospheric pressure with uh, the pure oxygen supply in the chamber. So what are the indications for the hyperbarbaric oxygen therapy? So wound healing in peripheral vascular disease, in bones, so which causes vasoconstriction, it increases the bactericidal effect decreases the edema, increases the collagen in the angiogenesis. So gas gangrene is one of the important indication and then arterial gas embolism and, and then uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, Parkinsonism like state. So that decreases the effect of carbon monoxide on the cytochrome C. 
so for uh, the hist histotoxic hypoxia this is indicated decompression sickness and then osteomyelitis and also myocardial infarction though this is not uh, um, practiced everywhere these are all the indication which are uh, which say for select the patients in make use of this therapy so we have to be very cautious over the treatment so if you are giving 100% oxygen treatment for over 8 hours there are some adverse effect so there will be features of airway irritation sore throat substantial distress nasal congestion coughing and bronchial constriction so if you give it for a day or two the patient may develop bronchopneumonia decreased ability of the alveolar macrophages to kill the bacteria and decreased surfactant secretion cyst formation in the lung may occur then retrolental fibroplasia so if they are uh, placed in the tent for a longer time so they may develop the retinopathy so this is because uh, retinal neovascularization and the uh, it will form an opaque mass uh, over the retina so that that uh, may lead on to the permanent blindness if they put them for a longer time uh, in the tent they may develop the retinopathy so derangement of cerebral activity tremors twitching convulsions coma and then death oxygen toxicity so so inhalation of the 100% oxygen uh, gives some harf harmful effects due to the conversion of the molecular oxygen into the active oxygen so that is uh, superoxide ion so which is a free radical so that can produce the complications so so it affects the eye if the retinopathy so visual field loss near sightedness cataract formation bleeding fibrosis muscle twitching seizures so jerky beat breathing irritate irritation of the airways coughing pain tracheobronchitis and even acute respiratory distress causes of oxygen toxicity so there is as uh, we have discussed there is formation of certain ions superoxide ions and also hydrogen peroxide so that oxidizes the polyunsaturated fatty acids and it destroys the cellular enzymes so hypercapnia and hypocapnia so hypercapnia is the retention of carbon dioxide in the body so where the carbon dioxide is not eliminated so initially there will be stimulation of respiration by the uh, storage of the carbon dioxide that causes oxygen narcosis and causes the finally causes the respiratory depression at the higher levels when the oxygen level increases to 15 to uh, 12 to 15% hypocapnia it is the result of hyperventilation the carbon dioxide wash out it is seen in the neurotic patients so who breathe heavily so that uh, the cerebral blood flow is reduced up to 30% so there will be increased cardiac output 
so bp is not altered so there may be hypocalcemia during the carbon dioxide washout or the hyperventilation remember hyperventilation causes hypocalcemia so this is an important question that will be put to the endocrine system so we will discuss that there why hyperventilation causes the hypocalcemia and then respiratory alkalosis this we have discussed in summary hypoxia is a stimulus for erythropoietin production therefore physiological hypoxia such as exposure to high altitude may sometimes be good for health oxygen therapy so hypoxic hypoxia it is very useful anemic hypoxia it is moderately useful and very less useful in the stagnant hypoxia and in histostoxic hypoxia it is not at all useful so books to follow so by indu kurana william genong gk pal in gaitanin thank you